Alright, so this is my uh, video on the top superstars of all time. Uh, I'm not doing 50, I'm not even doing 25, I did 15. Uh, and keep in mind that I'm 25 and my, you know, my wrestling is from the last 20 years. So, it's more modern, but it's definitely different from the WWE's top 15. I, I didn't, I didn't like their list at all. I thought Jeff Hardy on there, not at all. Um, there were just multiple things. Rey Mysterio, number nine, not even close. Um, but, uh, I just did a list of my top 15, and, uh, um, some of the criteria that I look at is always, uh, in the ring, what they do in the ring, matches and stuff, uh, how they're, uh, how they are on the mic, um, promos and whatnot, uh, the impact that they've had on, uh, the uh, organization, WWE, and, you know, the fans, and uh, memorable moments they've created and whatnot. Uh, so number 15 is Ric Flair. Um, some of you might have him higher. Um, I consider him uh, not really a full WWE superstar, considering he was only there from 91 to 93, and then came back later when he was well, well past his prime. But with that being said, his years from 91 to 93 are my favorite years of wrestling, um, 92 especially, um, I just thought he was phenomenal, uh, he had a good feud with Savage, um, uh, their match at Wrestlemania was great, um, they had the whole thing at, uh, Survivor Series in 92 with Savage and, uh, the Ultimate Warrior, whose corner Perfect was gonna be in and whatnot, and, and Flair was involved in that, and the 92 Rumble is my favorite Rumble of all time. Winner gets the WWF Championship, and Ric Flair ended up winning that. So, um, I put Ric Flair at 15, based pretty much on those two, two and a half years that he was in there. This was some of my favorite wrestling. Uh, number 14 is the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, the original senior. Um, my opinion, one of the, one of the better gimmicks of all time. I mean, he used to get extra spending money and, you know, fly first class and get great hotels because they wanted to get that gimmick over. And I think it's just a phenomenal gimmick. The uh, rich asshole, if you will, always paying people to do, you know, stupid stuff like bounce a basketball a bunch of times or kiss his feet and whatnot. Um, never really won anything, you know. Um, quite frankly, I, th I think all he won was the tag team titles a couple times and, uh, his million dollar belt, which, you know, doesn't count, but it's still, that doesn't take away from the fact that he was a great wrestler, great on the mic, his laugh, like, are you awesome? Um, so Ted DiBiase at 14. Uh, 13, I have Edge, modern guy. Uh, Edge, wow, let's see, well, he went from a uh, tag team specialist, one of the better tag teams you will ever see, to a transitional champion, who some thought will probably never amount to anything, to one of the better heels of uh, this last decade. Um, Edge put on a many, many, many great matches with Christian and the Hardys and the Dudleys, ladder matches and whatnot. Um, put on a great feud. He had a great feud with John Cena, which, um, you know, it lasted a while, but it was good. It was really good with their, uh, let's see, they had a, what, TLC match. And this was just a really great feud. And this whole thing with Lita, where he was this, you know, rated R superstar. Uh, the live sex celebration, I mean, that stuff is classic. Um, and uh, he's also one of the better faces of all time. People just, you know, they just, Edge is just awesome. That's basically basically why I have him on here. Plus, he's, what, over a ten-time champion. I don't know the number offhand right now. It's bad, but uh, I don't remember. But, yeah, Edge at number 13. And right ahead of him at 12 is Cena. Yeah, you know, I don't know what to think of Cena. You know, I could, he could, you could put him in the top ten, or you could not even have him on your list. He's not that great in the ring. He's not as terrible as people make him out to be. But he's not that great. He's f good on the mic. Uh, the rapping days were, you know, that's classic stuff. That's great. Everybody loves him when he was a rapper. Um, but impact is where John Cena is huge. No matter where you go, you will always, when John Cena comes out, you get a ridiculous response. Half the people are screaming that they hate him, and the other half are little kids cheering that they love him. So he, he really does get a response out of people. And he's had some great moments. Um, you know, his matches at WrestleMania weren't, one against Triple H was good, one against Shawn Michaels was good, the triple threat with Triple H and uh, Randy Orton was pretty good, um, so he has had the moments, and he's a lot better in the ring, as I said, than most people think or give him credit for, 
Um, so I have him at number 12. Um, number 11, I have Mr. Perfect, Kurt Henning. Um, oh, and uh, one other thing, you know, I didn't put championships really on here. Um, I don't really, you know, look at that as, as a real bearer of how great a superstar was. Like, there are some people on my list who haven't even, didn't win anything. It's just, you know, product of the times. Like, uh, Mr. Perfect, he just, you know, was never in the World Heavyweight Championship, uh, you know, category. He just was always in the Intercontinental feud or mid-card feud, but he was always a great wrestler. His match with Bret Hart in SummerSlam 91 with a messed up back uh, was one of the better matches I've seen. Um, he was phenomenal on the mic. I mean, He's just absolutely great at cutting promos. Um, I liked him as a sidekick, as a Flair's, you know, bodyguard, consultant, whatever the hell he was. Um, so he was great there, too. But um, he was great in the ring, great on the mic. Um, one of the better Intercontinental Champions we've had. That's what I wish the WWE would go back to, is having guys like him as champion, you know, for a while. And actually making the Intercontinental title mean something again. Uh, so... I have him at 11. And 10, uh, one of those guys I was talking about with no titles, uh, Jake the Snake Roberts. Um, top 10, Jake Roberts, number 10. Um, in the ring, he was great. DDT, um, he made like a, back then, you know, the uh, lame, quote-unquote lame moves like DDTs and gorilla presses and leg drops were, uh, you know, finishers. He made the DDT work when he would do the little thing with his hand, DDT, knock you out cold, um, carrying a snake to the ring, that's just cool, I mean, you know, that's just really cool, um, uh, he was great on the mic, he cut a promo, it's just amazing, um, and, uh, when he turned heel and feuded with Macho Man, it was, I mean, he was a great face, but he was meant to be a heel, because he, he's just a phenomenal, just a phenomenal heel, I mean, there's, just watch any of his stuff with Savage, it's a fantastic heel, um, Number nine, somebody who I don't really like at all, but you can't ignore what he's done, Triple H. Um, 13 title reigns, I mean, you forget, since he's been a face for so long, just what a phenomenal heel he really was. Um, I don't really have him as high as a lot of other people might, simply because I, I don't view him as a number one guy. Like, he always had The Rock, and he always had Stone Cold Steve Austin, um, and The Undertaker, and you know... Uh, Shawn Michaels carried the company by himself. He was a top guy. Bret Hart was a top guy by himself for a little bit. Hogan was a top guy, you know. So he always had somebody there with him, but you can't deny that he was great in the ring, great on the mic. has a lot of memorable moments and matches. Um, the title reigns are there. He's just, you know, he's, even if you don't like him, and he, you know, he, you're, there are a lot of people who don't like him, um, you got to put him on there. He's, uh, he's one of the, the better heels of all time. Um, at number nine, I have Bret Hart. Bret Hart, one of the greater technical wrestlers that we've seen uh, in the ring. You know, very few people can touch him. But on the mic, uh, if you want to laugh, just you know, listen to any of the Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels feuds when they're talking back to each other. Shawn Michaels will, will come up with these witty one-liners and whatnot, and Bret Hart will just say that you know, you're just cringe and go, oh. He's just, just, it's terrible. What are you talking about, Brett? Um, it just wasn't great on the mic. I mean, it wasn't horrible when he was just you know cutting a normal promo. But when he was when he was a heel, he was and he was trying to argue with Shawn Michaels, and it was just kind of comical sometimes. But uh, memorable moments, obviously a bunch. You know, I was at WrestleMania 10 when he beat Yokozuna. That was one of the highlights um, of his career. Uh, that was great. Um, 92. They had a, he had a ladder match. One of the first ladder matches uh, with Shawn Michaels uh, was on a. I don't think it aired on TV. It was just on Coliseum Home Videos. That was great. All of his matches with Sean or, you know, anybody's match. I could have a match with Sean Michaels and it'd be good. Um, uh, but Bret Hart, yeah, he's he was in the WWE forever. Great tag team guy. Um, this, you know, he's probably in most people's top ten. Um, number seven, The Rock. Rock might have some of the... He might be top four or five for cultural impact alone. Considering, you know, just when you hear, do you smell what the rock is cooking, people just go absolutely nuts. Um, nobody, I don't think anybody's better than him on the mic. It just, he could just cut a promo. Like, he, he, could, he was gone for years and could come back and just cut a promo. Like, he, like he's been there the whole time. Um, in the ring, awesome, great. People's Elbow, classic. Rock Bottom, classic. Um, great in the ring. Um, a lot of memorable moments. 
This matches with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Great. That whole feud um, for the world title, WWE title, was great. And the whole feud for the Intercontinental title was great. Where he threw the, Austin threw the belt in the river. And um, that was just, you know, that's great stuff. Um, the most thing I love about The Rock is his, his mic work. I mean, you can't find, name me somebody who can touch him on the mic. There's nobody. Um, and I wish he had never left. I mean, you know, it is what it is. He didn't want to wrestle anymore. He wanted to go do, you know, movies and dress up like tooth fairies and whatnot. But uh, definitely, definitely top ten guy. Uh, six is a guy I don't really know a lot about because I didn't really get to see him much, uh, Andre the Giant. But for the sheer fact of it's Andre the Giant, he has to be in your top ten. I mean, it's, he was the big show before the big show. He was seven feet, yet he was athletic, and it was just, just imagine back then, there are a lot of athletes today, or Yao Ming, Shaq, how big, and guys like that, imagine back then seeing a guy like Andre the Giant, seven feet tall, and it's just, it's sheer awesomeness, and, you know, I don't really know anything about his ring work, I haven't really watched a lot of his matches, I assume it wasn't, like, terrific, but just seeing a guy that big do a couple spots here and there, you'll probably get your money's worth. Um, this moment, a memorable moment with Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 3, I mean, yeah, that's somebody, everybody remembers that, even though if you, you weren't around to see it. Um, huge impact, he's, you know, it's Andre the Giant, it's, that's all you really need to say. Um, Mike Work, you can throw that out, he, you hardly understand anything he says, but that's why he had Bobby Heenan for, uh, the later end of his career. You don't, you don't really, you don't really need to have him talk. Alright, so, top five. Uh, recently passed away, number five, Macho Man Randy Savage. Um, the fact that he's not in the Hall of Fame um, takes away all credibility to the WWE Hall of Fame. I don't even, you know, it's it's a joke. Randy Savage was the, I, I don't want to say he was the Robin to Hulk Hogan's Batman because he, Robin, that's an insult to Savage. He was, you know, 1A to Hulk Hogan. He was, he was just as important as Hulk Hogan.